Hey guys, Miss Marusa here, and in this video, we're going to talk about hybridization. Now, most of us know that S and P orbitals are involved in bonding, but the problem is, is that P orbitals have slightly higher energy than S orbitals do. Um, however, when things bond, we want to be bonding in equal energy orbitals. And so hybridization is the idea that orbitals mix together to form equal energy orbitals in order to accommodate for bonds that all have an equal energy to them. If I have single bonds all the way around something, I wanna ensure that we're starting off kind of on a level playing field and that those orbitals have an equal energy associated with them. Now, this is gonna be tied to where we discussed electron domains. Um, you, if you have an element and you're trying to figure out the hybridization around it, you would count how many electron domains are around that central atom, and it will basically tell you what the hybridization is. So, for example, if you have two electron domains, the idea is, is that an S and a P orbital have had to blend together in order to create two orbitals that have equal energy. So you can see here, here's an S cloud and a P cloud. Obviously, they have very different shapes to start off and so I'm going to create a blend of these two so here's my new blended orbitals um, the little dot basically represents where your nucleus would be and so you can see it's it's kind of a hybrid between the sphere and the hourglass it's kind of like a half hourglass but kind of more on one side versus the other weird thing right and so both of these orbitals have equal energy and this hybridization we would call an sp hybridization as it was the blend between an s cloud and a p cloud now normally we don't draw it like these two individual ones we kind of show what they would do together and so you see we actually end up ironically back with it, what looks like to be an hourglass so we'll talk more about that here in just a little bit so let's say around my central atom i have three electron domains so what that would mean is that i need three sets of electrons in order to blend together and so that would require three separate orbitals now as we know we only have one S, but we have three possible P's. So if I need three total orbitals to blend, if I blend an S with two P's, that will get me to the three orbitals that I need. And so this is what we would call an SP2 hybridization. So again, we're gonna blend an S cloud with two hourglass shapes, and that's gonna create these three hybridized orbitals here. Now, if we were kind of drawing them all together around my central atom, I would see it looks something like this. And if you kind of notice, that has got like that trigonal planar shape to it that we're used to seeing when we have three electron domains. Back up here, we had that linear shape that we're used to seeing with two electron domains. So now let's talk about four electron domains down here. With four electron domains, I would need to blend together four total orbitals that all have equal energy. So that would be a blend of an S with three Ps to get me to the four orbitals. So I would blend together my S cloud with my three different hourglasses in the three different directions, and that would get me these four hybridized orbitals down here. That would be called an sp3 hybridization. Well, when I kind of combine all those together, and notice how we end up with that tetrahedral shape that we're used to seeing with four electron domains with that 109.5 degree angle. So again, if you have two electron domains or hybridization would be sp if you have three electron domains around your central atom your hybridization would be sp2 and if you have four electron domains your hybridization would be sp3 those would be the orbitals that had to blend together to get that structure now i know some of you know that we obviously have expanded octet molecules that you would have more than four electron domains. You might have five or six electron domains. And for those, scientists actually can't totally agree on what the hybridization would look like. The idea is, is that you might eventually start to add on d orbitals. So like, for example, some scientists think that if you had five electron domains, you would have your s cloud, your three p clouds, and also a d cloud. And so that would get 
to an sp3 dehybridization. However, since scientists can't agree on that, AP Chem doesn't require you to know the hybridization for those advanced structures. They only require you to know these three that are on this page. So to kind of recap here, again, two electron domains, sp hybridization, three electron domains is sp2 hybridization, Four electron domains is sp3 hybridization. It really is that easy. However, I will warn you, um, when you have this hybridization here, uh, keep in mind that it does not take into account the total number of bonds. It only takes into account the electron domain. So like sometimes we can have three domains, but one of them be a double bond. And so I wouldn't take that into account here. The reason why is because pi bonds utilize unhybridized p orbitals so you might have like your sp2 hybridization but if one of those was a double bond then the third p orbital would be used on its own to accommodate for that pi bond okay so we'll see a picture of that here in just a little bit so let me explain what I drew here. It says, hey, identify the hybridization of orbitals and unhybridized orbitals around the carbon atom in both ethane and ethene. And they gave us our formula for ethane and ethene. So what I did first here is I drew my ethane out and I drew my ethene out, counting up all my Lewis dots and, you know, putting my carbons in the central, putting my hydrogens around that, all that business. So then let's say I wanted to figure out what the hybridization would be around one of these carbons. I look to say, hey, there are one, two, three, four electron domains around that carbon. Well, one, two, three, four orbitals means I have to blend together an S, a P, a P, and a P. So that would be SP3 hybridization. However, on the ethene, you notice that I only have one, two, three electron domains. Remember, double bond still counts as one domain. So that means I need to blend together three orbitals, not four this time, so that would be an S, a P, and a P. So that would be sp2 hybridization. Now, I did go ahead and draw some additional pictures down here to kind of show you what this would look like um, in actuality with the orbitals themselves. So what would happen is on those carbons, you would get that sp3 hybridization. So you would get a blend of the spheres and the hourglasses to create this kind of four clover shape around the carbon. And so what would happen then is the hydrogens could come on and do a sigma bond, a head-on overlap with those orbitals. The um, hydrogens themselves just have an unhybridized s orbital because that's the only orbital they have, and so they don't need any p orbitals to bond up. But when I get over here to this one, what happens is, as we said, we have sp2 hybridization. So that would give us the three orbitals, the three hybridized orbitals that are basically 120 apart that are in a trigonal planar shape. And so they would make their head-on overlap with those hydrogens to create those sigma bonds. And then I would get my sigma bond head-on overlap here as well. However, to get that extra bond in there, that get that double bond in there, that pi bond to it, what would happen is you would have an unhybridized p orbital on both of these carbons, an unhybridized hourglass that still exists. And so what would happen is you would get that side to side pi bond, just like we saw earlier when we looked at the structure that looked something like this. There's that side to side p orbital with that hybridized sigma bond here in the middle. All right, now, like I said, you would never have to draw these. This is the kind of thing you would need to be able to do, but I wanted to show you this just so we could understand that that double bond is not hybridized, which is why I don't take it into account when I do hybridization. So with that said, let's look at an example of what we might actually see on a question on the AP test. Um, so to start us off here, we see this lovely, crazy looking a hydrocarbon here that's got all these single, double, triple bonds, all kinds of stuff happening in it. So let's first talk about this carbon right here. If we were asked to determine the hybridization of that carbon, what I would do is I would look to see how many electron domains are around it. There are one, two, three electron domains around it. So therefore, this would need one, two, three orbitals. So that would be an S, a P, and a P. So this would be SP2 
hybridization. Now you're thinking, but wait a minute, Murray Sick, there was that double bond in there. Well, remember, that's going to use an orbital that is not hybridized. So the next one here, the next carbon also has one, two, three electron domains around it. So again, it's going to be sp2. However, looking at our next one here, we see that it has one, two, three, four electron domains around it. So that means I'm going to have to blend together four orbitals, which is an S, a P, a P, and a P. So that's going to be sp3 hybridization. All right, our next one down here. This carbon has one, two areas of electrons around it, two electron domains. And so this would be just an S and a P that hybridize together. The second and the third bonds that exist here would be an unhybridized P orbital. So those would be those pi bonds that I wouldn't take into account. So keep in mind, only sigma bonds are undergoing this hybridization. All right, take just a moment and see if you can put me an answer here and here. All right, so did you put an answer there and there? Did you try those out? Let's see how we did. So this carbon has one, two electron domains around it. So it should have been, oops, an S and a P. And then our last one down here had one, two, three, four electron domains around it. And so it should have been SP3. By the way, it does also ask in this question for us to determine the number of sigma and pi bonds. So each bond, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 will have a sigma to it. So that's going to be 13 sigma bonds here. Um, and then remember the double and the triple bonds, the second and the third bonds would be pi bonds. So I had a, a pi bond here. And then I had two pi bonds here. So that's going to be a grand total of three pi bonds in that structure. All right, last but not least over here, we have one more structure. Now, I do want to mention that you don't necessarily have to have a bond to be a hybridized orbital. A hybridized orbital could just contain an unshared electron pair. So on this one, I still have one, two, three, four electron domains around that nitrogen. And so therefore that nitrogen would still have an sp3 hybridization. Three of those orbitals will be hybridized and bonded in a sigma bond, while one of the orbitals will still be hybridized, but it'll just be an unshared electron pair. All right, by the way, this also has three sigma bonds in it and no pi bonds. If you feel like you could use some extra animations um, that you're really visual and you like kind of seeing this in action to help you better understand hybridization, um, this particular video link down here, which I'll also link um, in my playlist, has an amazing animation to it that shows those blended orbitals together. If you feel like you're still struggling with this, I'll be honest though, if you can do something like what I did down here, you should be in good shape as far as the level of information that you would need to know about hybridization for the AP test. All right, hope you're feeling confident with hybridization. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye guys.